winner. Adhere to the same standards of behavior online that you follow in real life. And last but not least, identify yourself with proper name. Distinguished audience, this webinar is intended to strengthen the technological skills of teachers in the English area. Whatever comment you have, please do it through the chat. Now, I will introduce you to the team of pedagogical technicians in the field of English knowledge. De la Dirección General de Desarrollo Profesional, Yasmín Matute, Jacqueline Aguilera, Noé Oliva. Del Centro Regional, Centro Sur Oriente, Ricardo Bertetti, Alma Méndez, Dareli Benítez, Roberto García. Del Centro Regional, Centro Occidente, Dulce Medina, Marvin Martínez. And your host, Jacqueline Young from Centro Regional del Litoral Atlantic. To continue, we are going to listen to the opening word of this webinar by Licenciada Mayra Coritza Salgado. Le escuchamos, Licenciada, el tiempo es suyo. Muy buenas tardes a todos en este 30 de junio. Eh, damos la bienvenida a cada una de las personas que han tenido pues, el grato placer de con conectarse con nosotros, especialmente a la doctora Leida Linares, quien está compartiendo todo este tiempo eh, sus conocimientos, su experiencia con cada uno de los docentes que aquí están este día. También quiero agradecer al equipo de inglés de la Dirección General de Desarrollo Profesional a nivel central y a nivel regional, que con mucho entusiasmo con mucho orgullo intentando contribuir al engrandecimiento de los docentes, pues han preparado este evento. Y bueno, hay 221 docentes conectados, seguramente son docentes que están siempre con ese entusiasmo y esa ganas de aprender más, porque al final pues hay que aplicarlo en el aula de clases. Entonces, sin más preámbulos, como representante de la Magister Lesbia Rodríguez, Subdirectora General de Desarrollo, profe, perdón, Subdirectora General de Desarrollo Permanente, le doy la más cordial bienvenida e inauguro el presente webinar que tiene por nombre Interacción en Entornos de Aprendizaje en Línea para Docentes de Educación Media. Sin más, que tengan una feliz tarde, presten mucha atención. Pongan sus ojos abiertos y sus oídos para que todo lo que la doctora Linares nos comparta sea bien adquirido y al final se practique en el aula de clases. Feliz tarde. Muchas gracias, licenciada Mayra Coritza, por esas lindas palabras. To continue, I'm going to read the biodata of our speaker, Dr. Aleida Linares. Biodata. Aleida Lisette Linares was born in Tegucigalpa, Francisco Morazán, in 1970. I have a little problem here. Okay, sorry for Okay. 
Okay, here we are. Sorry for that little technical problem. As I was saying, Dr. Aleida Lisset Linares was born in Tegucigalpa, Francisco Morazan in 1970. She is a primary teacher, graduated from Escuela Normal Mixta Pedro Nufio in 1988. She has studies in the professorate in teaching English from the Universidad Pedagógica Nacional Francisco Morazan, UPNFM by its acronyms in Spanish. And she holds a degree on teaching English as a second language from St. Michael's University in Vermont. Through the United States government Fulbright campus program. In 2005, she obtained a master's degree in education with a specialty in educational technology from the University of Ohio in the United States through the Fulbright Law Spa program. And in 2015, she obtained a doctorate degree in applied linguistics from the University of Groningen in Holland. PhD Aleida Linares has 25 years of teaching experience in the English area of the department, in the English area at the UPNFM, where she has also served as head of the Department of Letter and Languages, coordinator of the master's program in language teaching coordinator of masters of the faculty of humanities, head of university publishing system, academic technical assistant of the intercultural education program of the direction of special program. And currently she also works as technical assistant of the vice rectory for research and postgraduate studies of the UPN FM. Additionally, Dr. Aleida Linares has worked in different institutions of higher education nationwide as English teacher, such as Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Honduras and others. She has given conferences, seminars, workshops and webinars in various congresses or events on language teaching, pedagogy and intercultural bilingual education for the different level of the national educational system. In the research area, Dr. Linares has published her doctoral thesis on the subject of metacognition applied to the development of writing and critical reading skills in English students at the UPN FM. And she has also published scientific article on related topics. Besides, Dr. Linares is interested in subject areas such as educational innovation, for example, application of the teacher's portfolio, intercultural education, metacognitive strategies in the learning of second or foreign languages, new methodological approaches applied to language teaching, the case of neuroeducation or neurolearning and educational research. Education is our passport to the future because tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for the present. Lifethere.com. Now with you, Dr. Aleida Linares, who will share with us her knowledge and expertise. Dr. Aleida Linares, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Jacqueline, for that um, introduction. I'm very happy to be here. 
I hope that the um, the uh, the webinar is going to be useful for you, and you're going to continue uh, applying the knowledge obtained today in your classrooms. So I'm going to share my presentation with you. I hope you can see it. Can you see it? the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, let me try to... Uh, okay, I need to put it from the beginning, but... Uh, doesn't allow me to okay 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 the name of the presentation is interaction in an online learning environment for high school teachers of english okay and the general objective of this presentation is to provide and reflect about the opportunities for online learning that offers the tool Padlet for the teaching of English as a second and or foreign language. To begin with, we're going to start writing uh, in the chat uh, the answer to this question. What have been the most important lesson you have learned about online learning during pandemic times? I want you to uh, write um, about your answer to this question and write down your answer in the chat. What have been the most important lesson you have learned about online learning during pandemic times? And then the second question is, how have you managed to solve or reduce any difficulty you had? And have you been successful? Why or why not? So please think about these questions and type a short in one sentence. Okay, you'd answer in the chat. We're gonna have uh, one minute to do it. Do we have some answers already? Do we have some answers already? Not yet. Okay. Okay, here we have the first one that says uh, to learn about computer and how to use internet. Okay. Then we have lack of knowledge about technology. We learn to use technology like classroom, etc. Okay. To learn more about technology, there is another one. Being patient, waiting for assignment, lack of connection in both sides, teachers and students, lack of technology, knowledge. Here we have another one that says, I learned it's important to know about digital technology to use in class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Poor knowledge of the use of online teaching platform. Okay, very good.
digital technology and platform. That's the last Okay, one. very good. How to manage time, they're saying over here as well. How to manage time, okay. teachers let me see we learn to understand the problem of the students we need okay. to use other tools in technology as classroom sometimes it is difficult to use them because we do not manage too much technology right okay very good now the second question is how have you managed to solve or reduce any difficulty you've had in the classroom how have you managed to solve or reduce any difficulty you have in the classroom? Any answers to the question? Not yet. How have you managed to solve or reduce any difficulty you had in the classroom? Looking for more information in technology. Very good. I have had to, de to dedicate time to be able to manage tech. Okay. To dedicate more time to learn about technology. Learning every day in the way to reduce the difficulties. Okay. Being able to learn every day. Being to adapt to the changes. Okay, being able to adapt to the changes. Then we have learning different techniques and, and, tools, and tools on the internet. Okay, it very not, good. It is not the same being in classroom than being in home teaching. Right. Yeah, it's true. Using different strategies when the students don't have connection. Okay, right. Uh, I've changed the way of delivering lesson. I've tried incorporating several technological platforms. Okay, very good. I think I think we got a good number of answers right to the questions. Now we can continue. Okay. Now we, we can continue okay, with the presentation. I think some of the most important lessons probably are mentioned are to be able to adapt to the technology, uh, to be able to, to be more patient uh, with students. Uh, technology, because the change okay, we had last year from face-to-face uh, -face classroom to online uh, teaching and learning was Right, something uh, very um, quick and fast, and was something that we were not ready, right, to to apply in the classroom. So most of us had to adapt, okay, very quickly to that big change in the classroom, to uh, be able to learn about new tools, right, and strategies uh, to apply in the in the classroom. And some of the difficulties have been to be able to manage, okay, uh, teaching from home, uh, to be able to cope with uh, problems with connectivity, okay, of our students, uh, to be able to uh, be patient and learn about the students' problems, okay, and also to be able to uh, manage those problems right from home. So all those things are. I think are important lessons to keep in mind, right? In this new, um, in this new uh, time, okay, for um, virtual education. Now we're going to get to some facts about connectivity and technological competences based on some research done by experts at the UBN that tell us about what is the 
the real situation about okay virtual uh, learning in pandemic times voy a hablar un poquito en español porque creo que hay alguna confusión con algunos maestros que están conectados y están eh, confundidos con la presentación y están pidiendo que la presentación porque es en inglés y no es en español. Y al principio de la presentación se explicó que la presentación es en, es, en inglés porque está dirigida exclusivamente para profesores de inglés de educación media. Y por eso la presentación es en inglés. Entonces yo quiero pedir las disculpa, disculpas del caso pero la, la presentación es en inglés porque es exclusivamente para maestros de inglés. Entonces, me imagino que van a ver eh, en, a futuro otras capacitaciones en español para los profesores de otras especialidades. Pido las disculpas del caso. Ok, some facts about connectivity and technological competences. For example, the standard Honduran family um, has uh, very much low connectivity in internet. And um, 35% of connectivity and less than 20% of access to internet plan at home. And only 13.8% uh, counts on a computer at home. So you can see that very few families in general have access to computers right at home. And so there's very low connectivity in internet at a general level. In-service teachers from all levels of education uh has more than 90 percent access to a cell phone with uh payment okay access to internet so it means that teachers in order to uh, perform their classes in order to do uh, or teach from home they have to pay okay for internet and they have to make use of their cell phones at home right in order to uh in order to cope with uh, their teaching at home um because there is no um free access to internet right so we have to pay for our own access to internet so most of the time teachers have to deal with economical situations also or conditions in order to have access to internet 60 percent of all the teachers have access to a computer at home uh, and in the rural areas that percentage is a little bit lower um 77.8 a percentage of all teachers have access to fixed connection at home uh with better conditions at private schools and urban areas um in general okay uh, general teachers in service teachers right they have access to fixed connection at home okay but in private schools this situation is a little bit conven more convenient or better because they have better conditions of working okay than in public schools okay in rural areas uh there is the situation it's a little bit more problematic because there's very little connection to mobile technology uh and uh connection to internet it's almost zero right and then especially in those areas that are more distant or far away right from municipal municipal cities or um, those areas in which indigenous uh, communities are located in so the situations in those places it's even more difficult right than than rural areas that are closer to okay uh, municipal cities so for authorities of the secretaria de educacion right or the minister of education these are situations that had to be okay uh, thought about and and they had to pay attention right to these uh, places and these communities in which mobile technology is almost non-existent okay because kids in general and kids that belong to indigenous uh, communities they also have the right to education right and we have to teach them as well because they have the right right to have access to education uh in short most teachers don't have access to a personal computer and their mobile phones are not smart or their technological competences are minimal okay uh, now we're going to talk about what do parents think about uh, online teaching six out of ten parents confirm to have economical difficulties and during pandemic time most parents get connected through a mobile phone uh and some on a permanent basis or some others eventually and only a few of them have access to a computer at home so the same way that teachers 
most teachers have access to, to their teaching uh, through a, a, a mobile phone. In the same way, also parents have access to mobile phones to, for, for the kids, okay, or students to get connected to. So it means that computers are not tools that are commonly found in Honduran families, right? But only a few of Honduran families, okay, compared to the rest of the, of the, or the general country have access to computers. This is something also that we have to think about at the moment of teaching. Frequency connection with teachers is once a week through virtual tools, but that frequency changes according to conditions of connectivity. Okay, uh, at the UPN, students, okay, for example, in 91.3% think that economical situation has been affected by COVID-19 pandemic. 31.7 uh, use also mobile phone to take classes. 18.5 uh, use only a computer as the only technological tool. And 43.9 use more than one tool, right, to have access to their classes. Uh, most of the students have difficulties to get connected online for a long time or have difficulties to obtain high demand applications. Um, it means that uh, online teaching has to be very well planned right on the side of the teachers and also we don't we cannot be connected for long periods of time right with the students because students don't have um, access to uh, internet for longer period of times or they don't have access to high demand applications right so all these little things somehow have to be taken into account at the moment of planning our classes um, so what does it mean also? It means that we have to look for free access applications in internet, right? So that our students get, get uh, or take advantage of them. Um, applications that can be found, okay, on, on the web um, by free or they have free access, or at least they can make use of part of the applications before they can uh, start getting paid for it right uh, and that is something that teachers we have to be uh, we have to be looking for those kinds of tools uh for our students and we have to be able to um learn about what are the most beneficial tool, digital tools for our students, right, to be able to learn in a better way. Okay, what is next? After that situation, uh, we can get worried or we can learn about it, right? Uh, and if we get worried, uh, we're not going to do anything about it. And maybe some of you are going to say after the presentation today that you don't have access to Padlet, for example. But yes, if we look for opportunities, if we look for solutions, we will have solutions. And the tool you're going to learn about today, which is Padlet, is for uh, There are a, a number, up to a number of uh, boards, or uh, applications you can use with Padlet before it start getting paid, before they start asking for you to pay for it. But you can take advantage of, of the free access you have. Even though it's reduced, right, you can still use it for teaching purposes and for learning, right? And this is what we have to learn, right? We have to learn to look for solutions, even though we are surrounded by problems and we are surrounded by difficulties and deficiencies, okay, in terms of education, what we have to be part of the solution, right, in, instead of the problem. And even though it's, it's getting, okay, kind of difficult to cope with so many situations, right, or challenges that we're facing in, in the classroom today. Okay, so what we can do about it is to improve online learning, to reduce the digital gap existing in Honduran families, looking especially at rural areas. Voy a decirlo en español. Una de las soluciones más importantes que debe de haber es que las autoridades de educación, de la Secretaría de Educación, hagan un esfuerzo por mejorar la enseñanza en línea y reducir ese gap o esa brecha digital que existe entre las familias hondureñas, principalmente en el área rural. Improve general access to connectivity and mobile technology for both teachers and students. Mejorar el acceso 
general a la conectividad y a la tecnología móvil, tanto de los estudiantes como de los maestros. Esa es una eh, prerrogativa de la Secretaría de Educación. No es tal vez la responsabilidad total, porque es una responsabilidad compartida, pero sí es una prerrogativa de la Secretaría de Educación. Contribuir a mejorar el acceso a la conectividad de sus docentes y de sus estudiantes. Provide schools and high schools with technological resources of open access to both teachers and students. Educación en línea, educación a distancia o la educación híbrida, que es a la que nosotros nos estamos moviendo hoy en día, requiere que nuestras escuelas y nuestros colegios cuenten con recursos tecnológicos de libre acceso para maestros y estudiantes. Y esa es una también eh, obligación de nuestras autoridades y va a ser algo en lo que nosotros nos vamos a tener que eh, incluir permanentemente. O sea, que la búsqueda de recursos tecnológicos de acceso libre para nuestros estudiantes va a tener que ser un deber nuestro de manera permanente. Develop intensive teacher training sessions to improve technological competences about online teaching and learning on a permanent basis. It's something extremely important, like this webinar today. Uh, it's important for the Secretary of Education, all authorities and directores departamentales to provide spaces and, 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 and opportunities for teaching training, right, on technology, um, on technological competences. Buscar oportunidades para capacitar a los docentes en materia de competencias tecnológicas es también una búsqueda permanente que debe de darse a, a partir de este momento en adelante. Okay, now we're going to get into the second part of the presentation, which is Online teaching, what is online teaching? Because we've been talking about online teaching here, online teaching there. Okay, it's basically an educational paradigm that is based on the interaction between teacher, student, technology, and classroom environment. And online teaching is also an educational framework in which teachers and students interact Okay, through a learning management system or virtual platform. Most of the time we use, for example, Moodle as a virtual pl platform for teaching our students. So um, that, is, uh, uh, that is called a learning management system. It's a virtual platform that allows to design, create, uh, organize, or um, archive, okay, our um classroom teaching okay and then it's also a type of learning that refers to the dynamics of the development of the teaching and learning process by means of a virtual environment okay and what is a learning management system a learning a learning management system it's something that we're going to get very familiar with from now on it's a type of software that allows to create administer archive distribute and manage all the learning activities that we have created in an online environment. Those uh, systems can be also complemented face-to-face -face, or it can be also for distance learning. What are some examples of learning management system? Moodle, okay, for example. No sé si en la Secretaría de Educación están usando Moodle, okay, para eh, diseñar sus aulas virtuales, pero me imagino que sí. En la Universidad Pedagógica utilizamos Moodle para diseñar nuestras aulas virtuales. Este, hay otras eh, plataformas virtuales que tenemos acceso, pero la más importante es Moodle. Uh, LRN is another example of learning management system. Ducebo and a tutor. Okay, these are learn, uh, learning management systems that are free. Uh, and you can explore them in internet, right? There are other ones that are paid, okay? You have to pay for them. And also you have to pay also as a consultory, okay? For them to be installed and, and you have to pay for technicians, okay? Or experts to explain how to use them, right? And to, and to um, be able to uh, teach, okay? 
the teachers how to use it and how to install it, right? So there's a lot of money in into putting a virtual uh, platform. Okay, so we have to learn. We have actually to learn what kind of tools, right, or platforms can be more accessible for us, either at the Secretary of Education or at home. Um, there are two kinds of communication that are typical in a in the in the virtual uh, system, and we have to learn about that as teachers, right? It is impossible to be connected all the time. It is also impossible to teach through Zoom, okay, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A virtual education is not possible, is not to transfer, right, the hours of teaching in the classroom into Zoom. That's not virtual teaching, right? That's not virtual education. Virtual education has to be integrated or it has to be organized in such a way that combines synchronous communication and asynchronous communication. Because teachers have to be also able to do other things. We have to plan our classes. We have to dedicate time to our family. We have to dedicate time also to go to the doctor. We have to dedicate time also to take care of ourselves or to uh, do other things that are part of our lives. So we cannot be connected 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? So in order to do that, we have to plan. Synchronous communication refers to the type of interaction when all participants come together at the same time, like this webinar right now, for example. All of us are connected right now. You can see me right now in a live uh, way, right? I can see when you okay are also chatting, right, uh, in the chat room uh, or writing your answers in the chat room. That is synchronous communication. We are dealing or interacting at the same time, okay? Asynchronous, asynchronous communication is the type of communication when the participants do not coincide at the same time. Right, and this is the usefulness of a platform. Platforms allowed, okay, for teachers uh, to to um, post texts, okay, sounds, audios, or videos, right, in a platform, and then students can go and have access and study them, okay, at their own at their own pace and at their own time. We don't have to be there all the time. We can be, we can have tutorials at certain times, right? Or we can, can plan synch synchronous communication, right? At the best uh, time possible, okay, for us to be able to instruct the students or to be able to teach your students, but it doesn't have to be all the time. Virtual teaching is not to be connected all the, the, the same hours that we're supposed to be teaching the students in the classroom, right? So there has to be a combination of synchronous and asynchronous communication in the platform. And this is something that we have to learn, right? Through um, technological uh, competencies or webinars. Cycle of learning, we need to pay attention to leadership, to the teaching process and the evaluation, right? How to put them together in an in a in a balanced way. You are leaders in the classroom, you are leaders in the community. So we have to okay be able to develop leadership skills in these times of uh, pandemic, right? Because uh, we have to be able to innovate in our, cl our classes and we have to be able to look for resources that were not available before, right? And if we find those resources, we have to be able to use them correctly or properly and we have to be able to share them, right? With our colleagues. The teaching process has changed completely from face-to-face -face teaching to a virtual uh, kind of teaching or, or uh, online uh, learning, which requires other type of competences for teachers and the evaluation process also has changed drastically from face-to-face -to, -face to online kind of evaluation. So the curriculum has changed and from completely from a traditional classroom to an online type of classroom that it's called for a disruptive type of education. Right, disruptive education means to break up a paradigm and means that teachers and students have to have different roles, right, and conditions 
to fulfill nowadays in education. So we're not going to go back to normality anymore. No es cierto que vamos a regresar a la normalidad. We're going to go back to a new normality, which is going to require to be digital citizens permanently. Okay, so the digital competences for teachers requires for teachers to be analysts, facilitators, designers, collaborators, learners, leaders, and digital citizens, right? Which is something that we're going to, uh, we're going to have to learn, right? To become digital citizens on a permanent basis because we're not going to become traditional teachers anymore. No es cierto que los maestros vamos a ser reemplazados por la tecnología. Lo que va a suceder es que los maestros tradicionales van a ser reemplazados por los maestros que aprendan de la tecnología. Eso sí vamos a ser reemplazados. Pero los maestros nunca van a ser reemplazados por la inteligencia artificial, por la tecnología. No, vamos a ser reemplazados por aquellos que adquieran esas competencias tecnológicas y que estén al día con la, eh, con la tecnología digital. Y esos que aprendan a desarrollar esas competencias son los que van a, a, son los que van a deshabilitar prácticamente o a descartar a los profesores tradicionales. Eso sí va a ser una realidad. Ok, digital tools uh, in online teaching. There are 10 resources that we can talk about, right, in education that have been the most popular ones and probably are becoming the most useful tools, right, for personal learning, for the workplace learning, and for education. And it's YouTube, PowerPoint, Zoom, Google Docs and Drive, Word, Google Search, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and WhatsApp. We're talking about some virtual platforms here, and we're also talking about internet-based resources, right, for teaching. These ones are the ones that we need to learn. O sea, estas son las que nosotros necesitamos aprender ya de manera casi obligada, okay? Okay, tools for personal learning. We can talk about tools for uh, formal learning, like online courses, learning platform, discovery findings. Um, we can talk about web resources like Vimeo, YouTube to make videos, uh, Google, um, Pinterest, uh, Dirigo. Those are for readers uh, and search engines for looking for information, for doing or learning from working, we can talk about content development resources, blogging, productivity, uh, office tools and suits, suits sorry, and Zoom platforms for chat and video meetings, uh, digital notebooks, okay, my mapping, and so on. For the workplace, we can talk about very similar resources, but we can include other ones that are more uh, useful okay at the, the workplace uh, level we can talk about office tools uh, file sharing we have to be able also to learn about zoom uh, chat and video meetings uh, we have to be able to use collaboration platforms to collaborate with other people at work or at um, school or university uh, we have to be able to use mind mapping okay to analyze topics uh, pre do presentations on topics, uh, be able to use online courses, right? Uh, be able to use platforms or course authoring to design, okay, websites, courses, and so on. Now we're going to get into the tool, okay, we're going to get today, which is Padlet. Uh, Padlet is a digital bulletin board tool that gives us teachers and students the opportunity to share ideas, uh, work, review content, and even play games. So when you get into the Padlet.com, Padlet.com, you're going to get a page like this one, right? Um, <clears throat> you have to get what is Padlet useful for? What are the characteristics that makes 
of Padlet an important tool. Uh, you can post messages, text, videos, and audios, files, or any kind of digital content into it, right? Padlet is like a bulletin board, right? And you can post almost anything in there. You can also be able to visualize and respond to contents, right? Ideas or resources into it. Uh, you can use it for classroom purposes or you can use it for social purposes. But we are talking today about classroom purposes, right? Uh, you can also download it into your computer, into laptop, or you can use it in your iPad or your smartphone, right? As an application. Remember the Padlet.com, okay? That's the name of the page, which you can go to and you can download the application. Teachers can control students' comments or additions to it. And also you can empower shy students to collaborate in English, right? Through a Padlet. The only inconvenient probably to Padlet is that you can only, um, make use of three bulletin boards into Padlet. More than three bulletin boards, you have to pay for the premium uh, version, okay, I think. That's the, the URL to log in into Padlet is this one, right? You can copy it in your uh, notebook right now, right? Or in your Word processor, uh, you get to log in you have to get to log into the web page, okay? And then you're going to get a web page like this one. You have to register yourself or you have to create an account. In order to create an account, you're going to go to registrarse. Le va a decir, no tiene cuenta en Padlet, registrarse. So you're going to click on registrarse and then you're going to create an account using your Gmail account, right? Because it's compatible with Google, with Microsoft and with Apple. So if you have a Gmail account, it's very easy to register yourself and create an account. You use your Gmail account, right? And then you can create your account. When you, once you create your account, you're going to initiate session, right? Okay. The first page you're going to get is something like this. It's going to give you a welcome, okay? And it's going to give you the choice of make a Padlet, join a Padlet, or a gallery. Upgrade means that you want to move to the next version, which is paid, okay? And then you're gonna have to pay for it. So we're not going to have access. We're not going to see that one right now because uh, we're going to look at the free version of it, right? Which is the ones that has free access for everybody. So you're going to decide to make a Padlet from the very beginning. I'm going to show you very quickly one version of a teaching portfolio that are designed in Padlet, right? And then I'm going to give you a, a demonstration by one of my students at the UPN who's going to show you, okay, the roundabouts okay, of Padlet. You can create an account and make your first board and then you can um, ex uh, share your board with your students by using a QR code or a link. Okay, you're going to obtain a link once you have your, uh, your Padlet and then you can share that link to your students through an email, through WhatsApp group, or you can can post it okay in the platform okay whatever platform you are using you can share it with your students students can get into your padlet by uh, as a guest right and then they can start interacting or responding to whatever activity you are developing for them how to post things on padlet como se puede escribir en padlet you can double click anywhere on the board you can drag files in it, you can paste them from a clipboard, or you can just click the plus button in the lower right corner of the Padlet. Now I'm going to show you, this is one uh, example of a teaching portfolio, okay? And in this case, when, once you click on Make a Padlet, you got the option of writing a title for it. Okay, which is this one. And also a short description of it, okay? And then you can insert text, right? Uh, usually you have here uh, the option of adding um, text uh, to a column, right? And then also you got the option of adding images to it and make comments to it, right? In this case, I, 
I uh, introduce uh, all the parts of my teaching portfolio, and then I combine it and complement it with it. I upload a text in PDF files or in Word files, and then I explain what it's, each part of it was about. Uh, it, this is a very traditional layout, right? Uh, because it's very linear, it's easy to read, but you can also create more, okay, dynamic or interactive kinds of, okay, layouts for your Padlet. In the second one, you have here, here, in order for every column or every new addition to Padlet, you're going to have this kind of a presentation. And there you're going to have these options over here. If you click on this option, it means that you can upload any file, right, to uh, the columns or to your Padlet. And then you're going to have this box over here. You can upload, for example, photos from camera. You can take photos of yourself. You can take a photo of yourself with a camera. You can videotape. Okay, anything you want. You can have also audio recorders. You can record yourself explaining a topic, for example, or the topic or giving a speech or, um, and then you can upload it to Padlet and students can listen to it and then they can respond or they can do uh, an activity that is related to it. Uh, you can also do drawings right into Padlet. And also you have other ways to add resources to Padlet like links, right? You can add YouTube videos, you can look for images, you can also connect it to Spotify and then linked to um, music, okay, uh, files, or you can also integrate uh, GIFs, okay, if you want. Another way of okay working or adding resources to it, if you look at the second option here, that is a URL option. And then the URL, you can enter here a URL to any website, right, or page in the internet, and then you can um, add it to, the, to your Padlet, and then students can read, uh, can go to the website, or they can read something related to the topic, they can watch, okay, um, informative uh, uh, websites, or they can do, they can play games, right, uh, or they can read a podcast, for example, or they can have audio books, right, any website that is relevant or interesting for you to uh, apply in your teaching classes. If you go back again, you have another option here, which is uh, the web. Okay, here with this one, you can upload images, GIFs, YouTube videos, Spotify and web. And the only thing you have to do here is if you want to upload an image, right, you click on images and then you, okay, upload an image found in your files, right, stored in your files. And then you want to upload a YouTube, you only type the title of the video and then automatically it's going to, okay, upload it to your Padlet. Uh, and the same thing with Spotify and web. So that's nothing difficult. You're going to see it with my with my students right now. I'm just going to go over a little bit faster. And then you have another option here with a camera. You can even take a photo of yourself with the camera and then you can post it in there, right? Um, very easily. There is galleries also of examples of projects that you can um, watch, right? And have ideas for uh, working with your students. Some um, strategies or techniques that you can do okay with your students is to brainstorm on a topic uh, you can do live question banks you can gather students work and display it you can do online students portfolio you can do uh, icebreaker games play games okay to uh, make students feel motivated to start the topic. You can give compliments, right? Or you can do thinking maps or mind maps in, in Padlet. You can do or uh, enhance classroom communication in, in uh, Padlet. You can do book discussions. Students can read a book and then they can write what they think in, uh, in Padlet. You can, they can analyze a quote that you leave in there for them to think about it. They can do not taken 
write about a class, they can, you can dictate a class. And after that, they can go to Padlet and they can write like a summary of the class or they can just write what they think about the class. If they liked it or, or they didn't like it very much, they can do a complete uh, a story, for example, write the ending of the story, for example. They can do an event planning. If they go on a field trip, virtual field trip or something, they can plan it on uh, Padlet. Uh, okay, now we're going to move to Alejandra's project. And she's, she was my student at the UPN and they did a project on Padlet by putting together a lesson plan. So I'm going to pass the, the microphone to Alejandra's, um, Alejandra uh, Nicole. Thank you. Alejandra, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to pass it now to Alejandra who's going to explain a general details about the project and how to Good afternoon everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hello, you all. My name is Alejandra Nicole Carcamo, and today I'm going to show you and explain you how I did uh, my portfolio in this interactive board that is Padlet. Um, this portfolio uh, I did it in the class that is didactic uh, grammar didactics with the Dr. Aleida Linares. Um, you can see my screen. Everything is okay. Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. As you can see, it says my teaching grammar lesson plan. Um, this is uh, the first the the first part that is a cover. I added as a photo. And. How can I add it a, a photo? As the doctor said, you can upload a photo from here and you can choose if you wanted to add from your device or from the web. I'm going to explain that later. And um, this is my portfolio. This is the general information of the class. This is my table of content. Um, the first is autobiography. Um, that has an image of myself. Uh, the lesson plan, um, this portfolio has a lesson plan that I did in group and then a PowerPoint presentation that we show in a class with all my classmates. Here is my autobiography, the lesson plan. What I wanted to say is that here is the way that we can add a pictures. You can pick the file and for example, let's see, I wanted to add logo. I can just click here. You just have to wait a few minutes and there you have. Another thing, uh, you have an option to write a title. Let's put it cover. And you have to click outside there. And this has an option to write the um, edit the past, delete it, and put a color, the color that you would like to show. I'm going to delete it. And if you um, are not sure that you want this post, you can edit or you can delete it. Let's see. Are you sure you want to delete this past? This cannot be undone. That's all. Then here below, like I was showing you, is my lesson plan. This lesson plan is in Google Docs, it's on Drive. So I added with the link, okay, with plus, I go 
the last plan and copy the link. I have to go back to Padlet here. Click, enter URL, the right, click right and paste. And there you have. Um, when you put a link, uh, Padlet uh, gives you the option to to a previous image, okay? You just added this and click on it and you have the full view of past post. You have two options here, opening a new window and view full post, okay? Look, this is my lesson plan. My lesson plan is about uh, the preposition combinations with task-based This is my free task. This is the last stage of that is post task. And below we, as a group, we write a reflection of the lesson plan and here are the appendixes. Okay. Let's go below. Then is my power presentation of the lesson plan that I said that we show in, in the class with my old classmate. The first um, thing we do in the slides was write to um, write the general information of the lesson plan in order to adapt this in PowerPoint. Here are the number of students, place, learning objective specific objectives. And here, what I did in order to show the PowerPoint presentation was to attach images, screenshots. You can screen um, the, the, you can do this screenshot on your computer or on your phone. And you can um, save the images. Look. Okay, this is the reflection we had after the PowerPoint. Here in the appendixes, I did uh, the um, two ways. The first one was to attach the links and then one by one, the first appendix is a video. When you add a video here in Padlet, you just have to click on it. I don't know for my internet connection is going to show, there it is. And there you have, as you can see here, it says proposition combinations, right? How can we add the, as I show you, you just copy the link and then you, and say, look, click out and there you have. So I did these two ways in order to show my appendixes. Also, we have, um, I have dialogues and conversations that uh, also are in Drive. So I just uh, attached the link. And then I did a personal reflections. Um, you can write the title, right? That's it. Here is the title. This one doesn't have a subtitle, and this is the body. Um, for this portfolio, uh, we did a technological resource. I choose genially. It is a poster uh, with uh, the topic of my lesson plan. So when you add it, you do the same, paste the link. You just click here. And you have a view, previous view. I don't know if it's going to load because my internet, but here it is my poster. There you have preposition combination. 
Letty. Normal, um, the normal, normal way, you can see the previous image here. There you have. I thought it wasn't going to load. And the last part of my portfolio is the references. Here I have my references of all the resources I used. Talking about the background, how I put that background. The option to modify. This is the title. As you can see, my title is shown here, my teaching grammar lesson plan. You can write a description if you want. Excuse, excuse me, Alejandra, the audio is a little bit sloppy, so maybe if you can turn off the, the camera. so that we can listen to you in a better way. Can you turn off the camera so that we can listen to you in a better way? Or you finished already? Did you finish already? We cannot listen to you. Jacqueline or? Yeah, if anybody can help her, please. It's a signal. The signal, I think, is very weak. It's the internet. It's her internet. Well, I think it's because there are too many people connected because we have been trying uh, other times and they haven't had any problems. I think it's because of the platform, it's kind of. Alejandra? Well, basically, I think it was, most of the demonstration was done already. So I don't know if we move to uh, the questions because of time. Yes. Okay. We're going to have the section of questions and answers. You can check down your question on the chat so we can read it and the doctor will gently answer your question. It says that Padlet is really interesting. You can interact with the doctor by writing down your questions here in the chat. Can we create a portfolio for every student in Padlet, just like Classroom? A profile, yes. Uh, every, every student can have their own um, account. Every student can register and they can create their own account and they can also have their own Padlet. And we can also revise and get into it of course, through the link, and then we can give them feedback, okay, to it. And actually, that's the way that I work, okay? Every student usually create their own Padlet. I get the link, and then I go, and then I check it, and then I give them feedback. 
Okay, through it. So they can have a, a, an account by themselves and they can create their own student portfolios or their own products. Yeah. Can we create quizzes? This is another question. Quizzes. Uh, yes, you can create quiz, but you can, you're going to have to apply to, to make use of other applications for quizzes. You can also use Google. Um, surveys or questionnaires and then you can create your quiz in google questionnaires and then you can attach it to padlet you can continue interacting with dr linares by checking down your question here in the chat. Here we have a question, doctor. It says, does the information remain in the cloud or it fades away in the long run? Excuse me, can you repeat? Um... Yes, it says, does the information remain in the cloud or it fades away in the long run? Um... It, it remains in the cloud, I think. It remains in the cloud. It, as far as I know, it doesn't, get, it, it doesn't get away. It stays in there. But in the long run, um, I don't know, it's possible that you know Google and, and all these applications start getting, okay, uh, getting rid of information in the cloud. But for the meantime, you can uh, apply it and use it in the cloud and store it in the cloud, sorry. Here we have another question, it says, is it free? Oh yes, it's for free, but remember that you can only use three padlets for free. More than three padlets, uh, you have to um, upgrade it to the premium version. Para más de tres aplicaciones de Padlet, you're going to have to, va a tener entonces que pagar, va a tener que moverse a la versión de Premium, y ya esa versión sí es pagada. Mientras tanto, podemos hacer tres aplicaciones en, la, en el aula de clase. Nosotros podemos tener tres Padlets o tres proyectos diferentes, eh, o podemos hacer un Padlet para cada clase que nosotros estemos Dando. Y entonces desde ese Padlet hacer varias eh, aplicaciones. Y los estudiantes también pueden tener uh, hasta tres diferentes proyectos en Padlet. Recuerden que un Padlet es un bulletin board. Here we have a comment that says, excellent. I'm going to try to put it in practice. Another question here says, can I use Padlet to make plans? Lesson plans? Yes. Yes. Yes, of course. The example that you gave, that Alejandra gave, is a lesson plan. It's a lesson plan, and it's a nice way to put it in there because you can, uh, in, you can attach to it, for example, other resources. You can attach to it um, articles, uh, PDF uh, articles, uh, books, um, exercises in the in the, in the web, blogs, videos. Uh, audios, you can also um, attach your own explanations or your own audios, you can record yourself, right? Uh, and you can put your audios in it. So it, it, it's a, actually a very nice way to do your lesson plans. Okay, thank you very much, doctor. We don't have any more questions. No more questions, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to say thank you, Dr. Linares, for such an excellent presentation. And we also thank your assistant for sharing her experience.
with all of us. Okay, thank you very much. I'm really, I want to apologize because Alejandra got some problems with, the, with her connection and she couldn't get into back to the platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Please, please fill in the attendance form by accessing the link in the chat section. In that way, we are going to be able to share the material of this webinar with you. We have reached the end of this program. In behalf of Dirección General de Desarrollo Profesional, Centros Regionales, and the Pedagogical Technician, we want to say thank you very much, distinguished teachers and authorities for participating in this webinar. May God bless you and have a good day. Be, before you leave the, the room, please fill in the form so we can be able to share the information that Dr. Linares shared with us this afternoon. Then again, thank you very much for participating with us in this English webinar. And we hope that the information shared with you today will be Don't forget to fill in the registration form.